Um, I, uh, I I do this full time. This is how I make my living. I don't do it part time. I don't. I, I do it more than full time, actually. Um, I am the vice president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Pine Bush. Uh, I've lived here for almost 30 years, and I've raised my kids here. So I'm pretty well versed in what's going on with the town. <clears throat> um, what I'd like to talk to you guys about today is just what's happening in real estate now. You, I'm sure you guys have read the articles and seen the, the news reports uh, about it being a seller's market mm -hmm. and being that the market is so hot. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit and go pre-COVID and, and we'll start from there. Basically what's happened here, um, most of this area, most of the Hudson Valley, but I'm, I'm speaking right now right to Pine Bush because I'm sitting in the Pine Bush Library. Um, before COVID, we had a, a very strong market. It was a seller's market, but we had a decent amount of inventory. Um, when they talk about months of inventory, basically you're saying, given recent, uh, given recent history, how many months will it take right now, if everyone was to buy a house, how many months would it take for all of our inventory to go away? For a balanced market, you're generally looking at six or seven months. That would be a nice balanced market. It's not really a seller's market. It's not really a buyer's market. But it's a balanced market right now in town we are looking at one month's inventory wow. there are just no houses on the market i listed i was just speaking with you i listed a house up in walker valley only a couple of days ago it has been a revolving door and i'm meeting with the sellers after this to go over the multiple offers that they had oh my god yeah. Isn't this like prime time to start listing though? Like well, you know, historically, yes, we're coming into spring, right. spring market. But this market hasn't slowed down at all. Once COVID hit, everything stopped. Everything, I mean, the, the world stopped, right? Everything stopped. Yeah. But once people started getting into the, into the swing of it and masks and all that stuff, the money that started pouring out of the city was crazy. I had in town here, I don't know, maybe eight or nine listings at the time. They all went like that, mm -hmm. over asking, cash, people were um, waving appraisals, waving inspection, wow, wave, I mean, there was competition yeah. to get into these houses. Yeah. That has since leveled a bit, but it is still a very, very strong seller's market. And a lot of the calls that I get on my listings are from the city. Yeah. Absolutely, so. they're, they're still coming up without a doubt. I don't see the amount of cash that we were seeing two years ago this time, um, but still they're very strong offers, still a lot of cash, and they are absolutely still looking to come up here and, and enjoy our, our little town, mm -hmm. you know? So, so that gives some, some special uh, obstacles for sellers. You think, great, this is a seller's market. I'm just gonna put it on the market and we're gonna sell it and I'm gonna move. But where are you gonna move to? Right, right. This is happening all over the country. Where are you gonna move to? I have a listing right now that's signed. It's been signed for three months. They have nowhere to go. We'll see if, if they ever leave and, and you know that's up to them that's their choice obviously but they want they want out they want to move south they can get the most for their money now but what's it going to buy them where they go so this is a problem that a lot of people are having i have a listing right now and i see this a lot where they say <clears throat> subject to seller finding suitable housing and then the attorneys have to write it up and then how long is too long for them to find housing? Because now you've got a buyer and a seller in contract. Yeah. What's too long? So the lawyers have to come up with... Would that make it harder to sell the house if you said, mm. it's, we have to wait until I found... You know what? Right now, this listing that I just told you about, that I just listed, so this is real-time stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can say what happened last week and last month, but this is real-time stuff. It is in the listing, subject to seller finding suitable housing. I have four offers on it written right now. I'm expecting a few more and I'm meeting with the seller, like I said, after this. So, so no, it's not, and, and people are writing these offers saying, well, wait, but what is, 
a reasonable time to wait. Yeah. The attorneys are saying 90 days. The attorneys are saying about 90 days. They're going to 120. They're going to the end of the school year at this point. But what about like the banks and you know they only they'll sit the, you know, they'll sit you know it's so long. it's it's up to the to the buyer to have if it's not cash if it's a, a finance deal yeah. to keep that updated and to lock in rates when they can because yeah. the Fed's saying the Fed's going to talk in two weeks mm -hmm. who knows what they're going to do I don't have a crystal right. ball I, I wish I knew. Um, but everyone's saying the rates are going to start to go up with what's happening in Ukraine and, and, and the inflation here and everything. The rates are going to start to climb. So now we've got buyers scrambling to lock in rates. But there's no inventory for them to buy. Um, how reliable are, is what you see on Zillow, the estimates? Is Zillow is tough. You know, Zillow, you'll, you'll ask any real estate agent and they'll say Zillow sucks. But... You know what? I've seen it very far off, and I've also seen it pretty close. Mm -hmm. But your best bet is to have somebody like me come into your home and do an app, a market value, somebody who knows the local market, mm -hmm. somebody who, who has done it full time and, and really knows what they're talking about because real estate is so localized. It's localized within the Pine Bush School District. Pine Bush School District is, what, 110 square miles? So now you've got Walker Valley over here and you've got Scotchtown down there. That's even localized. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, not as much as, 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 as you would see between districts or between areas, but even that is localized. So you really, your best bet to know the market value of your home is to ha make an appointment with a realtor and have them come in. And, and we do that courtesy. You don't have to say, oh, I want to sell or anything. Just call me, and I'll come in, and I'll, I'll give you my opinion. Okay. And, and that's the end of it. That's that's something that we do as a courtesy. Absolutely. Don't you go on comps, though? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, yeah. In, well, the, in, the, in the immediate area. Within the immediate area, yeah. What comps do is, when you look at a comp, basically, when you sell a house, you have to sell it twice. You have to sell it to the buyer, and if they're financed, you got to sell it to their bank. Because their bank is not going to give them a loan if you're overpaying for the house. So now you're worried about appraisals. You've really got to find a balance between what the market's willing to pay for a house nowadays and what the bank's willing to pay for a house. Um, so the, the comps, what appraisals do is they look within that general area right there. So you start where the house is and you work your way out. So you start right there but you never go outside the school system so we're going to start within a mile of your house and we're going to work our way out looking for these comps but comps have to be comparable i can't compare a, a, a 900 foot ranch to a 2500 foot mm. square foot colonial with a built-in pool and a three-car garage so you know the, the comps have to then that's why you start going out side of that mile two three radius because now we're looking for an actual comp price per square footage is hard to do because you've got one house that's sold for x amount of dollars and it's beautiful and it's updated and everybody wants it and then you've got this house over here that hasn't been updated since 1945. So square foot is hard price per square foot is very hard to go off of and and honestly we don't do it much. I mean, the MLS, all that'll give you price per square foot, but it's a very different thing to to actually have to work with in real time and, and realistically. So yeah, now, now I'm looking for the square footage. I'm looking for number of beds and baths. Um, I'm looking for- How about acres? I was gonna get to that. So, <laughs> so square footage is number one. Beds and baths is number two. Then we start looking at things like up, up, uh, upgrades, how, how uh, uh, upgraded is the house, um, extras like a pool, which isn't, doesn't always add to value, um, a lot of property, maybe a, a barn, a, a, a three-car garage, extras like that. Property matters, but not so much. Like if you're, I can easily comp a house with three acres and five acres. The buying public isn't going to say so much, oh my goodness, that's not the same. 
to most people, that's a big yard. It's fine. It's the same thing to most people. Now, three acres and 20 acres is different. That'll count different because now I'm going to add back for some of that property. Um, but generally, unless it's a real big difference in, in acreage, not all that much. Not going to be crazy amount. Like I said, if you're talking three three acres versus 20, 25, yeah. But if you're talking three acres versus five, not going to be all that much. Not going to be all that much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like if, if you would, like if you came into my house and, and mm -hmm. do an appraisal, would you make recommendations to me to say, you know, if you fix this? Or absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I always recommend to my clients things they can do that are not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. might not bring more money for their house, but certainly makes it more marketable right. and more wanted by the public, by the buying public. Um, and, and, and those recommendations are all based on the market that we're in. Being that it's a seller's market, you're not going to have to make as many changes as you would if it was a buyer's market. So those things matter as well. Um, and I absolutely come in and go room to room with you. I'm a certified stager as well. So I, I go room to room with you and, and really try to, to put your house in the best light and put its best, its best foot forward for when, once the buying public does come in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Where am I? I, I did a little handout for you guys. I just wanted to show you some numbers about what's going on in in Pine Bush. Um, I, I took this right off of our MLS this morning. So these are numbers that are absolutely current. And it's it's very interesting if we want to go through this. Um, if you compare January, say, because that's the, we don't have February's numbers in yet, it's just more very beginning of March, so we're looking at January. And just right here, the first line, there were, in 2021 in January, there were only nine new listings in the whole town of Crawford. That's not that much. That's not that much. That's why we have revolving doors. In January 22, just a month and a half ago, we only had five. Two of them were mine, by the way. Um, <laughs> we only had five. It's just, it's crazy what's happening. So, right, Doris? It's, it's just, yeah, and I'm sure you hear it being in the library, people talk, and and and, and it's, you, you put a house on the market, you immediately have showings and offers. But that does not mean that you can outprice your house. The market is still not going to, well, they'll overpay a little bit, but they're not gonna overpay the way some sellers think. Some sellers say, well, there's nothing on the market. I, I'm gonna ask 100,000 more. The market's not gonna pay that. People are not gonna do that. And if it's finance, the banks are gonna stop it. Unless that person can come up with a lot of cash. And generally, that's a lot of cash to come up with, you know, so um, generally that doesn't happen, but but you've got to find that balance and you still need to market that property correctly and you still need to show it in its best light because if you have somebody not, if you have the buying public come into a house and it's not showing in its best light, they're not going to give you the money you want. They, they, they're still going to temper themselves. Right now, I, I tell you, I sit in meetings with other realtors all the time. I talk to them all the time. And we call each other and we say, what are we doing here? How do we price this? Because it's just, the, the market's moving that quickly. You don't know what people are going to do. And I have found the best thing for my clients to do is we'll... I, I, I'll look at the house, we'll, we'll come to a, a range that we think the house is valued at, and we'll go to the top of it, and we'll say three days. I'll say to them, three days. Let's have it on the market for three days, and we'll listen to the feedback. The market is going to tell us if we're overpriced. 
And let me tell you, the market absolutely does that. You either will not get showings or you'll get showings and I'll get phone calls saying, are you kidding me? You know, or you'll get some really low ball offers. And, and really in this market, within a couple of days, you'll know. So you don't want to leave any money on the table, but you don't, you don't want to... You don't want to stop people from wanting to come and look because even if you're willing to come down in price They're gonna think that you're gonna the buyer might think that you're gonna be a difficult seller to work with These are all the things when you're selling real estate that you need to juggle Because it's yeah, you're selling real estate, but it's it's people it's about people in their homes mm -hmm. and people get very very You know tight about that and you can understand that it's it's somebody's home, you know so getting back to what we're looking at here, it's just illustrating. If you look at this first, this first um, graph that I printed for you, on from. It's just took a nosedive. It has taken a nosedive. And this is why we have only one month of inventory on the market in Pine Bush today. And, and I would say to anybody wanting to sell their house now, this is the time to do it. But you got to have a plan on where you're going to go. You know, it, it, it's, it's hard. You know, you want to get the most bang for your buck. We're in a great market to do it. But where are you going to go? So you've got to have those ducks in a row first. And, and I can help you all over the country, but that doesn't mean you're going to have the money to do it or you're going to be able to find what you want where you're going to go. So I do have another house to go mm -hmm. to. Okay. But what if I didn't want to stay there? How long do you think, how many years before things... I wish I had a, a crystal ball. Oh my goodness. I, well, I'd be a rich woman if I had that kind of crystal ball. Uh, you know, the rates are going to start to come up. At least yeah. that's what the Fed says. That's what all my mortgage guys say. The rates are going to start to come up. Um, so it might temper a little bit, but being that there's no inventory, what happens? Yeah. I have a question about... Um uh, refinancing? Mm -hmm. Can I ask that? Now? You can ask. I, I'm not. A, I mean, I I know mortgage, oh, okay. but but I would absolutely refer you to a mortgage person if that's what you wanted well, to do. Yeah, but what's I'm, your question? Yeah. Um, we we have our house through Quicken, mm -hmm. and um, they were calling every day. We have a VA mortgage on the house. Okay. Every day wanting us to refinance. Some a couple times a day. Then when the rates changed a little, uh -huh. they recently stopped calling. But I always said to my husband, we're not going to be here long enough to make it matter. Your best bet would be to talk to a mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. Because a mortgage broker, like if you just talk to Quicken or a bank, and, and, and banks can be great, but they have only a certain amount of product. And they're going to try to squeeze you into that product. Like, what's that saying? A round hole in a square peg or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they're going to try to make it work. Where a mortgage broker works with all the banks, all the, all the, the lending institutions, the one that I work with, I, I'm pretty sure he works with over 40 different banks. They can find the product that will work best for you and for your situation. Um, but I don't think people realize how many mortgage products there are out there. There are a ton. It's not just a conventional with 20 down anymore. It's not just your basic refi. There's a lot of different products and your best bet, and I, I can pass a name to you if you want. Mm -hmm. the, your best bet is to talk to a good local mortgage broker and they'll be able to tell you really you know, what your, your best bet would be money-wise and, and for your particular situation. Um, banks are great. I, I, yeah, they, they write loans. They close loans. But if you really, and, and I say this with, all, with insurance, mortgage, all the go to a broker because they work across the board and they get wholesale rates. Okay. So your rate through Quicken might not be as good as your broker's rate right. because they get wholesale rates. So 
talk to talk to a broker. That's that's honestly my my best piece of advice when and it comes to that. I, so. I've heard too that um, if you buy a house, you should hang on to it for at least five years. To you know what? It depends. It depends on the the, the rate that you're paying and, and the amount down and, and, and all the, that. Uh, but closing, closing costs and all that fun stuff. It, you know, it depends on your personal finances. But that's that's a a rule of thumb. Okay. That's a rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until you can kind of break even and you're not. That's for the federal exemption of the two hundred fifty thousand or the five hundred thousand. Right. That as well. Right. Right. So. Um. So let's see, let's, let's look at another one of these fun charts because they just have so much information. The next one was the month supply of, of homes, which is what we talked about. Again, it is a, it is just taking a nosedive absolutely taking a nosedive i hope i hope the camera can see this it goes from in 2020 we had six months supply down to 22 um and and it's going lower in this month we're down to about a one to two month supply it's it's insane it's just crazy something i i don't know how long the market can last like this honestly it's again the crystal ball but a balanced market is a good market because then everyone there's win-win situations you know right now the the buyers are kind of under the gun the buyers are under a gun they are now when COVID like early 2020 mm -hmm. when it started getting really bad yeah did people hesitate to sell because they didn't want people coming through and stuff like that? You know what? Yes. Those first couple of months of COVID, everything pretty much stopped. Mm -hmm. The houses that were already on the market were still on the market, and those were the ones that were getting all those crazy. Like, like I said, I had a bunch of, of, of the listings in town, and I, I just was getting cash offers left and wow. right. Um, but now it is definitely it has definitely leveled leveled mm -hmm. out a bit. But yeah, in those first couple of months, nobody moved. Nobody moved. Everybody knows that. Nobody. And then sellers realized, wait, there's money here. <laughs> the The real estate market did not suffer in COVID. Ultimately, ultimately, it did not suffer. And this, somebody's not going to go. Oh, okay. He'll take it. And okay. then it, there was there a big influx of people from the city coming yes. in. Yes. Yes. And I, I I called it an exodus. Wow. They were just piling up. Just there's a lot of new people in our in in our town that have moved up from. It's not just locals anymore, because we're we're we commute. We're we're a commuter town. Yeah. You know, you can hit the bus, you can hit the train, you can do that, and we're still rural. You, you know, so it's 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 a wanted area. It is, and our, and our schools have a good um, a good reputation. Our, our schools have a good reputation. Even the shortage of housing is because there for a long time there was very little construction going on. What Our happens? Are being built. What happens with that? Because the new construction will stop if there's a good inventory of pre-existing homes, because then people aren't looking for um, people aren't looking for new construction because it's more expensive. You pay more taxes, all that kind of stuff. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Um, so what happens is once the inventory starts going down, the builders will start building because the, the need and the want is there. What's happened now though, it's interesting because of COVID and, and the uh, atmosphere. There was, what happened to lumber? Lumber prices went sky high, right? Nobody was buying them. I know I've got holes in my deck. I'm not replacing it yet. Um, it's just sky high and and so not as many new homes were being built. So we don't have as many new homes what would have made up the inventory. The builders are coming around now. I, I'm seeing more, but that stopped as well. So that kept our inventory very low. It's really the perfect storm. Yeah. It was really the perfect storm. Yeah. So let's see, what else do I have here? Ooh, let's talk about days on market. That's good. Average days on market from, tw again, this is the last three years. From 2019, here in the Pineville School District, we went between 90 and 100 days on the market, which is typical. 
down to below 50. And what happens is Days on Market is a, it's a number that's kind of a moving target because what happens is when you buy, when, when somebody sells a house, okay, you got the people in, you got offers, we'll go over offers, now we have an accepted offer. Is it still on the market? Technically it is, but we have an accepted offer. So now people stop kind of looking at it. You say we're showing for backup or it comes off the market completely, depending on what the seller wants to do. Um, and then, then what happens is you have your inspections, then you go to contract, and when you finally close, that's when, that's the days on market. So there's so many variables between that. So many variables. I just had a, a, um, a contract slow down because the attorney was on vacation. So we waited a week. So now the days of market is going to show another seven days when it was, it, there was nothing. We were all just waiting for the attorney. So it isn't an accepted offer for the day. It isn't. It's to close. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a, that, that's a tough number to really nail down um, because it is, it is a moving target. But it still shows a trend that a house can sit on the market for a couple of months and then get an accepted offer and then and this was in 2019 and then go to that 90 hundred days on the market they're closed old people moved out new people moved in everything's done but now when you look at this from start to finish we're talking not even two months that shows right there that deals are being made the first couple of days that house hits the market yeah. yeah that that just illustrates that point that while it is a moving target those days on market you can't kind of use it as the Bible but you can definitely use it as a um, you know as a, as, as a liftoff as, as a you know a, a spot to start in how long are these houses staying on the market and they're not they are not staying on the market at all. What else did I? Oh, new listings. Now let's let's see an illustration of why there's no inventory. <laughs> Again, three years back, but look what happened wow. from 2021 to 2022. Look at that drop. Look at that drop. And that's, that has, is, is what's happening in our town now. And that reflects in everything else, the days on market that we just talked about, because you're going to list a house, you're going to have people in it immediately, you're going to have offers. As long as it's priced reasonably, you're going to have offers. Um, so all of this, all, all of this information ties back to a lack of inventory. So if you want to put your house on the market, like I said, this is the time to do it. But you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. Yeah. I'm just going to go back to sure. the first page. Which, sure. And my interest was to, or is the condos. Okay. That, we don't have too many in town. <laughs> <laughs> we have, I think, one was sold on here, if I yeah, remember correctly. Yeah. Let me look. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the question about them? No, it's just the lack of. The lack of. Right, and then right. I, mean, I know this is Crawford, but like Orange County, is it is that the similar? It, it is. It, if you that. want, I can give you some numbers for all of Orange County. I can certainly send them to you. Um, but this is, uh, in my experience, condos are selling a little bit less. People want their backyards. People with, especially with COVID, are now appreciating mm -hmm. their own space more buy especially out of the city the buyers want their own backyards they want to be able to have their own little bubble kind of thing but that doesn't mean that condos aren't moving as well they certainly are just in my experience not at the pace but i can run those numbers for you for sure and get them to you um but 
everything's selling. If it's on the market, it's going to sell as long as it's priced correctly. And that's where a good agent comes in, pricing it correctly. So that you don't have the, the, the nonsense, the, you know, the, the worry and the stress of what's happening here. Price it, let the market tell us if it's okay, and, and let's move on with the process. That's what happens. Well, I'm a, uh, I sold my house here okay. in Pinebush. Mm -hmm. and it went on the market at the beginning of July of 2020. Okay, so and COVID was in full swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. full and, swing. And we closed uh, August 28th. Wow. That's quick. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what all of this right, is illustrated. Right. So you know, you lived it. Yeah, and you asked about the, the um, concern about having people in your home. Yeah. Very, I was very concerned. I mean, I made them wear booties. I was just going to say, <laughs> just because your home is on the market does not mean you're not in charge. Yeah. You yeah. are in charge. If you want people to wear booties or take off shoes or to put masks on in your house, that's your call. And, and your agent should make sure that it happens. Right. Um, that will be in the MLS. It will be, you know, if, if something like that, you'd have a little basket by the door with the booties and, right. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other thing that you could do is only decision makers, only two decision makers in it at once. Right. No children, no mom and dad, no, you know what I mean? You can bring them in to look afterwards the second time, but you know, if, if that's something that you're concerned about, there are ways to make it happen. And, and people are respectful of it. People are ab absolutely respectful of it. And you, you it's did your okay home. with that? People are all right? Yeah, but I went in and, and sanitized all of them. <laughs> well, at the time, the at, at the time, I mean, think about it. We were full swing yeah, COVID. Right. And, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Was, yeah. And nobody knew what was yeah. going on or, or, or anything. Yeah. And um, it was like, oh, what did they touch? Yeah. You know, so every doorknob. <laughs> every doorknob. You, you yeah. took the Lysol to, and yeah, yeah. Um, yes. My sister lives in Golden Park on the other side. Mm -hmm considered Walden, but it's really uh, Crawford. And um, her neighbor uh, didn't want, at the height of the pandemic, didn't want anybody in, in his house, mm -hmm. their house. So he videotaped every room and put a sign on the front lawn that said, ingenious, said, uh, <laughs> go to this website. For sale or... by owner, mm -hmm. go to this website to see the interior and the house sold in a week. I bet it wow. did. I bet it did. Yeah, we did a lot of virtual showings. I would, you know, they would let a lot of sellers would be okay with the agent coming in knowing that we'll be respectful. And, and, I, and I did virtual showings. I had FaceTime and I was walking around with my phone showing it and people bought and people bought. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's not like that anymore. The, the, um, Guidelines have certainly been relaxed, sure. masks and all that. Um, but if somebody was absolutely nervous about COVID, yeah, let's let's do it according to all the COVID rules. We can have them sign COVID releases. Yeah, there's thing, yeah. absolutely yeah. the releases. Yeah, yeah. there's. You had to sign a COVID release. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that. Yeah, and and it all had to come in first. It was. Yeah. Uh -huh. It, it was What's and nobody knew it. it was basically just a form saying that you know I haven't had COVID and I don't have a fever yeah. and I mean that was before everything before before all, vaccination yeah. before oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah yeah before yeah. oh but before vaccines right. before yeah. all of that yeah. that was yeah and it was and people did you get asking price for your house or above above, above. Oh, above. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. good yeah. for you was and it a cash and job? it was it was uh, there wasn't a bidding war but it was what was it Go into first the highest and best, or the agreement was the, done in like eight days. Wow! Oh wow! You know, so it was. Was it cash first. or was it finance? No, it was finance. It was well, finance. It was finance okay. for the veterans. Oh, which okay. Was a challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of those loans, yeah. VA loans, FHA loans. There's a, like we just said before. There's a lot of different mortgages out yeah, there. And you need somebody to really be able to talk you through them to see if it's a good fit for, right. for you. Right. Um, VA and, and FHA, it depends on the, on the, the shape of your house. They, 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 their appraisers will come in and they, they get a little more nitpicky. They do. 
they do. FHA they do. with Rudolph. I sold a house with them. Did you sell a house FHA? Yeah. See, it sold depends on the home. It depends yeah. on the home. It really does. Yeah. I, I think they just have to find something. Oh, this, there was. Um, hey, there was. It was paint. paint oh, peeling on, paint in the basement. Oh, they're huge on peeling paint. Yes, I've I've had houses called out. I sold a house. Which, oh, this was up on a wasting last year. And um, they called it out for a shed. It was just a little shed in the backyard. It was just to hold the lawnmower. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared about this shed, but it had peeling paint and FHA cared. Oh. So it, it, nothing on the house itself, just the shed in the backyard. So, and it depends, things like that, it depends on your appraiser. You know, some, they have, appraisers have their rules and regulations that they must follow, but they're human. Mm -hmm. And maybe that one didn't have their coffee that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe they fought with their kids to get on that school bus yeah. for crying out loud, get on that school bus. Who knows? You know, who knows? But, but they're human and, you know, things like that happen. You just don't know going into some things, what's going to get called down and what's not. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Did you have a lot of first time home buyers? Doing During COVID? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? There's a lot of first time home buyers out there right now because rates are great. Oh, yeah. And, and right. that there are, and there are programs out there where you don't need the 20% right. down. Yeah. You can do 3% down nowadays. Yeah. FHA has a 3% or three and a half. One of those, like you can do, you don't have to have a, a, a pocket full of money. Yeah. To buy a house nowadays so yes there's a lot of first-time home buyers out there and 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 they're they're competitive they're absolutely competitive because even if they're a first-time home buyer they've got the same loan as somebody you know maybe a conventional as long as apples to apples conventional to conventional who cares if they're first-time home buyers or they've bought three times it's the same loan there wasn't so, more red tape with, with first timers. You know what? In on, on the mortgage end, sure there might be, but not on not on the real estate end. Oh, okay. That's something that the the first time home buyers will sit down with their mortgage broker or their banker, and and go through and that. They'll figure that out. And they'll figure it out on there. And 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 when they're out looking, they should already have that completely squared away and settled, and know what they can afford, what the bank thinks they can afford. And, and, and really know their numbers. That's the, that should be all settled before. In this market, mm -hmm. you cannot look at a house without a pre-approval or a proof of funds in hand to make an offer. Nobody's gonna waste their time. Nobody's gonna waste their time. Because they, because they know that by the time you get that pre-approval, there's gonna be an accepted offer already on that house. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're in. What if you have a little house? I'm not planning on moving, but if you have a little house and it's appraised for 175, mm -hmm. okay? Let's say at some time point in the future, I, it's a tiny little ranch. Mm -hmm. They sell like crazy, by the way. I Those know. little starter houses, and love them. I have two love acres them. with it. Oh, beautiful. Land. That's a beautiful the thing. Mm. And let's say that it's appraised for 175, mm -hmm. but a couple of years down the road, I'm getting old. And I want to go down to South Carolina. Because that's the law. Yeah. <laughs> what if I say, and the market is still red hot, so I, I say I want 350 for it. Okay. I can set the price, can I? You can set the price. Doesn't okay. mean the market's going to pay for it. Okay. Or the and, bank, like you and, said. Or the bank. I think you walked in a little bit late. I think you might have missed before. I said, you've got to sell a house twice. If it's not cash, if mm -hmm. it's a finance deal. You've got to sell it to the buyer and you've got to sell it to their bank. It has to appraise with the bank's appraisers, and you you cannot fight an appraisal. You you cannot fight okay. a bank appraisal. Dear but, Lord, you can't do it. I tried. But, They're just this is the the person the bank hires. They I, I, unless mm -hmm. you really get into it, unless there was an egregious mm -hmm. mistake on that appraisal, mm -hmm. which I've seen before. Um, chances are they're not going to change it so right, but i've heard uh, there's a lot of cash offers going there's a lot on. of cash and that's the thing of beauty take the money and run right exactly <laughs> take the money and run but but he, so so getting back to your question if, if somebody offered double the amount for your house mm -hmm. the bank's going to say oh no 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 back up 
And even even a cash deal, a, a decent agent's going to say to that person, "Are you crazy? You're really overpaying for this house. Let me show you comps. Let me no, give you a better off." <laughs> yeah, right, right. But we work for our clients, you know. So um, so let me show you some comps and and let's bring that down to a reasonable level. Um, you can ask anything you want for a house. Doesn't mean the market's going to pay for it. Or the bank will get a mortgage for something. Right. Right, yeah. and and that's where a, a a good a good agent comes in, and and they'll come in and, and and give you their professional opinion on the value of the house, and it's usually arranged because you don't know exactly, you know, like I could come in and say, well, your house will sell between one seventy five and two. By the way, it'll go more than that today. Just, you know, two acres, little ranch, you're over two anyway. But you give a range because you don't know what the, the market's going to mm -hmm. land on and you don't want to be told, well, you were wrong. I don't have, here's, here's the crystal ball again. You know, I don't have that, but I can give you based on comps, based on my past experience, based on my, my um, involvement with the town, this is what your house is going to Go to sell for. Okay, I'll take a little less, three twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Let's write it up. Let's write it up. Yeah, but nice. where are you gonna go? But where are you gonna go? Exactly. That's the problem that's nowadays. The that's problem. that's the problem. I, I mentioned before. I have a house that's been signed for three months. They have nowhere to go. Oh wow. So, so they they can stay there and, and sell nobody's it gonna on. force them to sell their house just because you signed a contract with me to sell your house doesn't mean I'm gonna make you sell it. it you know it's just if you're going to sell it I'm the person but mm -hmm. people it's their house they can decide I mean yeah, they're running the show you know I make sure that everything stays on the up and up and legal and and professional and and that you get the most money you can for the house but ultimately it's your home and and you call the shots tell us about the inspection what kind of inspections go on okay Nowadays, what happens, I, um, the, the, the basic process we talked about a little bit before was you put a house on the market, people come in, you negotiate, you've got a deal, now what happens? Now they want an inspection. And in New York State, there are license, licensed inspectors. Mm -hmm. If you had your brother Bob, who's a contractor, come in and look at it, I'm going to have you sign a form that says you didn't have a licensed inspector come in because things could come haunt you after the deal closes and, and that kind of thing. Um, the inspectors, they will always find something. And keep in mind, there is no pass fail for inspection. People say, oh, my house didn't pass inspection. There's no pass fail. It's just the inspector looking at all the components and systems in your house and making a report and giving it to you and saying, is this something you can live with? you pass fail it yourself you know um and and then if there are large issues that the inspector uncovered that the seller might not have been aware of so the house wasn't priced according to that issue because things do come up i mean you know people don't always know that they might have some sort of foundation issue or the roof is old or whatever it is um and then maybe negotiations can happen again but what happens is between an accepted offer and going to contract is, is a limbo time for both the seller and the buyer. The buyer especially is in limbo because they're lining up their inspector. They're, they're getting their ducks in a row, but no money has changed hands so the seller could accept another offer. And by law, the real estate agent has to present every offer that comes in. So if, and I've, I've seen this happen, especially in this market. So now this buyer is having their inspections done and they pay for them. And if they don't want the house or anything happens, they don't get that money back. That's their cost of doing business. And an inspection generally runs in this area around 500, give or take. Um, so now that, that buyer is having their, their inspection done. And now this other this other agent, this other person is writing another offer, which could be a nice offer, and, and I have to put it under that seller's nose and present it. And it's up to the seller to say, 
I don't care about that buyer. I want the money. Sure. Or or just say that's not the right thing to do. It's a, such a personal thing. You know, people might really need the money. People might not want to kind of get bad karma. You know, it's it's a very personal business. It's about real estate, but truly it's about people. It truly is about people. I, I have a question. Yeah. I um, was selling a house. This is going back about 10 years ago. And um, the lawyer says, that the disclosure form, he says you can um, fill this out mm -hmm. and, you know, tell the truth about everything that's wrong with it, or you pay the buyer $500,000. Is that still... I don't know one lawyer that would advise you to fill that form out. He well, didn't. He said, and then I, you know, I thought yeah. my house is perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you don't know. But you don't know. <laughs> know. Um, just for you guys to know, if you're not aware, in New York State, there is a, a disclosure form to fill out that the attorneys have um, about the condition of your home and any defects that you might know about it. Um, and you either fill out that form. And then you're kind of locked into these defects or if you knew about them like somehow you can somehow somebody could legally get you in trouble there or you pay that buyer 500 bucks and it just goes back and forth there's a credit during the closing it's not like you're getting cash 500 cash mm -hmm. it's just paperwork basically and they can say nothing they're basically taking that money in lieu of that report and every single lawyer that I've ever worked with, I, not one has ever recommended to fill that report out. You're shaking your head yeah. yes, because you know <laughs> yeah. your your lawyer yeah. just told you yeah. the same thing. Yeah. 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 And some of the things that are on that disclosure. Oh, too, they're crazy. Like, yes. I mean, some are detailed, but others are like lead paint. You know, how, how many houses have lead paint been? Painted? Right. And how many layers of paint have been yeah. painted in these yeah. houses that were, you know, be, before 19, I think it's 72. And, just uh, yeah so uh, any attorney they always say that's the best 500 bucks you'll ever spend and and yeah. ignorance could be bliss too if you don't know about it okay you but how about that. how <laughs> about the other on the other side that's what their inspector is for yeah that's what their inspector is for that's how they they can kind of cover themselves on the other side because that mm -hmm. inspector mm -hmm. going back to doris's question they come in they don't just look at mechanicals and roof. Mm -hmm. They test every window. They pull open every drawer. They they, they run the water. Well, they like run the water. Yeah, asbestos. Asbestos, asbestos. Asbestos, right? Yeah. Termite. Yeah. There's all kinds of inspections that, yeah. that can happen and, and that's for the buyers you know, own own good really. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so that's that inspection. You can get a septic inspection. A lot of people do that as well. Mm -hmm. Make sure that septic I mean, because we're just mm -hmm. septic around here, most 80% of septic. And water testing, too. And water yeah. testing is the other one, right? And radon. We, we, we are in a high area, a uh, high radon concentration area of the country, so people do radon here as well. Mm -hmm. Well, when, I, when we were buying our house, it was in February, mm -hmm. with the inspection, and I was reading the inspection report later, they said, well, it was February, so couldn't really do too much about the septic. Really? You know. Um, well, you know and what then the we problem did have is, problems. Yeah. So we and that's, her, Whoa. that's one of the things because they have to dig it up. I mean, mm -hmm. they, there's two types of, of, of septic tests. Um, one is they run a dye, which I, I uh, my understanding is it's not a great test and not too many people do it. And the other one is they actually dig up the tank and put a camera down there. Wow. And in, the, in February, you can't dig. So, you, yep. yeah. And then, then you have issues. Yeah, yeah, you have issues. So that's one of those things that people sign off on and, you know, you kind of hope for the best. And and it, it is better, not better, it's different buying a house in, in the spring and summer than the winter. It is. Oh, now I know. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. Yeah. But um, that's what attorneys are for, to protect you in contracts. That's what agents are for, to protect you in the, the process of it. it when, when you sell a house and when you buy a house, you need a good team. You do. You need, you need your agent. You need your inspector. You need your attorney. You need your mortgage broker, depending, like I said, what side of the, the deal you're on. You, you need a good team. You do. 
Can I answer any other questions? Well, what about this? I just got a card in the mail myself the other day. We buy your house as is, or you fix oh, it. Oh, oh. cash. Right low. Again. They low, low, low. They will low ball you, and and you sure it'll go quick. Those guys are wholesaling. Either they're flipping it to the flippers, oh, sure. or they're wholesaling it. Either one. Yeah, I get a, a postcard I, or a letter that with a picture of my house, oh, and and, yes. and it says if you want to sell this, call this number. You know, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Take a picture of my house? Yeah, right. That's a little invasive, don't you think? Well, a little, you get them to do that. I got a card ones. yesterday with the house picture, a little picture of the house right on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I wonder, do they sit there and, and look at the, um, you know, Google street. Earth, like I they go through so, that yeah. instead of they don't drive around, but. Yeah, those guys, sure, they'll give you cash, but you know what? I could get you a lot more cash. <laughs> even, even with my fee, I can get you more cash. They really, really lowball. Do you find a lot of the buyers are from New York City coming up here? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of local people, but yes, a lot of yeah, city, northern New Jersey, oh, like really? Bergen, a little bit. Well, they, That's so proud of it. Expensive. Yeah, Expensive. For the size house you get there versus here, you know, and, and again, people are looking for a little more wide open space, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, a lot of a lot of our buyers are absolutely city people. I have a couple of listings I mentioned before right now up in Walker Valley, and, and I've been getting so many calls from Brooklyn for whatever reason. I don't know, Brooklyn I'm getting a lot of calls from, but there it is, yeah. Anything else? Well, maybe I shouldn't ask. Is there anything that we should know about a broker if we're not happy with them, or what should we, you know, look when, for? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. When you're looking for a broker, you definitely want to look for somebody with experience, like anything else. A full-time broker, you want to look for. There's a lot of people out there who think that being a real estate agent is easy, and that it's a part-time job, and they can do it nights and weekends. Doesn't work. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult for me as a full timer, who this is how I make my living, trying to call other agents and not being able to get them. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've skipped by them. All right. I'm, you know what? If you're not going to call me back until seven o'clock at night, well, you know what? Seven o'clock at night, I'm having my dinner and, and and, and, and they're not doing their, I, I don't want to put people down because people do what they can and, and work as much as they can. But it's just difficult to use a part-time agent because they're not there full-time. Right. And this is a huge amount of money. Why would you want to use a part-timer, right? That's a lot of money. Um, so look for that, look for somebody local. Uh, look for somebody with good local connections. Like for instance, if, you needed something done in your house to prep it for sale, I could give you recommendations of con local contractors. I can give you local. I can give you local recommendations of anything you need. Um, that's where a lot of the agents um, are, 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 are helpfulness comes in. This is what we do. We make it easier for you. But you want someone that knows the area. You want somebody that knows. Real estate is extremely localized, mm -hmm. extremely localized. You you need somebody, if not in town, within the surrounding mm -hmm. area, certainly. Um, you want to look at their brokerage. When you sign a, a contract with a real estate agent, you're not signing it with the agent, you're signing it with their brokerage. So you're in a contract, like say if you signed one with me, you're in a contract with Rand on Main Street, not specifically with me. I'm I sign it. I have signing power for the brokerage. I, you know, I'm listed as the as the agent for you. But if you ever had an issue or anything with me, which by the way you wouldn't, but if you ever had an issue or anything with me, you would go to my broker because that's I will first come to me and see if we can you know settle down you know settle settle things. But but you would go to the broker and say to them, hey, th this is what I'm having a problem with, because that's who the contract is with. Um, so you might even have somebody local, but their broker could be far away, and do they know what's happening? Um, a, 
a larger broker in town, in my opinion, is better than a boutique broker because they do most of the business. For instance, Rand, we do, and I don't have the chart with me, but I could get it to you. We do the lion's share of business in, in this town, but that's because we know the town. We, we know the locals. We know the, the general feeling of this town and, and how it's sold. So th that's what you want to do. And then you want to look for an agent who's personable, who can talk to people, because that's what this business is about. This business is about agent to agent, talking and figuring things out and bringing clients in and talking to the seller and talking to your attorney and talking to this person and talking to that person and, and maybe having to go to the town and pull some your, your property card if there's some information that might not seem right. So that, that's really what you want to look for in an agent, absolutely. What yeah. is the agent's fee? Do they get 10% or what is the... Gen okay, and that's taken off the, the, the selling price of the house? Yes, generally um, it, it is a percentage and 10% is very high. I, I don't know anybody to pay 10% out oh. there. Okay. If I was getting 10%, <laughs> woo! Anyway. <laughs> and... and <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be happy right now. I wouldn't be freezing in March. Um, Keep in mind that uh, commissions are, are not something that the state likes us to talk about um, because everyone can set their own commission. Generally, I'm going to say a big general here because the state doesn't like to talk about it, us to talk about it. As a norm around here, it's 6%, but it is a negotiable item. It is a negotiable item, absolutely. So you want to sit down with your agent and talk about what you're going to get for that 6%. And if you're not happy, talk to them. We're not even allowed to, we're not allowed to say this is the going rate because it changes from not even broker to broker, but agent to agent. Because say, like I said, I work for Rand, but I have the authority to say, well, We've talked. We're not. I'm not going to charge you X. I'm going to charge you Y, and that's fine. And we just write it into the contract, and off we go. And you do sign a contract for like six months, right? It's a negotiable item. That's negotiable. It's a negotiable because item. If you don't sell it in three months, and you I'm might not be happy it. with me. Well, Wait, it's you... not that. It's that if it's not sold, if it's the old market, mm -hmm. and it's not sold in three months, and I want to go down to Florida, so um, take it off the market. Just so you sign a three and. and Lots of agents, they say, no, six months or a year. Our, our contracts are printed up with nine months already printed. Mm -hmm. I can change that, though. You can absolutely change okay. that. And, and, and if you, again, it's your home. If, if you, you, you signed a contract, we're showing it, we've got a sign on your front lawn, but then one day you say, you know what? My life has changed. I don't want to sell it. Don't sell it. Then you can we take it. it off the market. Mm -hmm. Now, now there, there are obviously uh, um, fine print in there about that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can give you a, a copy of our contract just to look for your, for your information. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's your house. Nobody's going to force you to sell it. Um, and at that point, you would still have a contract with me, but I would just take it off the market. And the contract can run out. Or you can say, life has changed again. Let's get it back on the market. And we'll do that. Again, it's your house. Nobody's going to force you to sell a house until you're in contract with the buyer. Now you're in contract to sell that house to them. You're in contract with me for me to sell it for you, but I don't, I don't have to. Again, it's your house. You tell me to sell it or not. But if you sign a contract with the buyer, it's going to cost you to get out of that contract. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, you you need to know you're moving. And you need to have a good attorney who can put riders in there for all the all the little miscellaneous things that you need to happen with the sale. For example, you can't move for another three months, so they, they, the buyers are going to have mm -hmm. to wait, or that type of thing. Just you know, personalized issues, mm -hmm. personalized issues. And it's just the seller. That Right, the commission, right, um, there's a lot of splits in the commission. 
a lot yeah. of splits in the commission. Oh, do I wish I got the whole commission? No, no, no. People so, think that though. But that they, they, they do, do. And, and, and this and is why I, I do these talks. Yeah. I, I love educating people on this. I get, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I get 6%, right? Out of that 6%, I'm giving the buyer's agent part of it, right? And then out of the leftover percentage, I split that with my broker and there's a lot of different levels depends how much business you do with them all this all this nonsense um, how much they get and how much you get so so yes the seller gem generally pays all commissions there are a few instances where the buyers client uh, the, the, the buyers agent client the buyer will pay their agent out of pocket but that's not general. That's if they're going after a for sale by owner or, or something like that. Generally, in New York, in this area, in this locale, seller pays all commissions. Now, I have a question. This is something that I, I've heard along the way. Like, say, say I'm asking 300000 I get an offer. For three hundred thousand, do I have to take no, the no, no? Okay, no. you don't have to take so anything. You, you can just wait to, to get more offers. You can try, but honestly, if you're getting a list price, if you've worked with a good agent and we've sat down and talked about what the value of your house, the marketable value of your house is, you're you're you you priced it at a, at a price point that you're happy with. So something like that, maybe you're not happy with the terms and conditions mm -hmm. of the offer, but the money, you've priced it. And, and most contracts with brokers have a, have a small print writing in there that say, if we bring you a buyer, you're gonna owe us the money. Because now we've done all of our marketing, I've had photographers, because all marketing and everything comes out of my, my split, it's not like, okay, I'm gonna get a drone in and you're paying for it. No, that comes out of, out, out of the agent's part. So now we've put the marketing efforts in, sunk some money into it, and now you're saying, well, oh, but I don't wanna sell. So there are some legalese things like that in there, absolutely, and every brokerage is gonna have them. All right, every but you, single but you still wanna sell, mm -hmm. but you want maybe a higher offer then at that point if you're not getting them raise the price and see what happens but it's hard to go up you can it's hard to go up but like price. when like say they're talking about people get multiple offers well maybe your particular property didn't warrant multiple offers mm -hmm. maybe it was overpriced to begin with and that that mm -hmm. offer that you're getting for your asking price is a darn good offer mm -hmm. in this market if you're priced correctly you're going to get action on your house